Jesus Christ, dude. Guys, certainly, certainly there's nothing to worry about. That all of these fascist motherfuckers are winning elections and stuff. It's fine. I'm saying it. Oh, here, hey, for all the, for all the, a dooch that wanted me to cover their elections. Here it is, far right populist Gert Wilders, who is very anti-Muslim. He won the Dutch election, says the exit polling. Uh, Fernand, uh, good evening. What's the latest where you are? Good evening. So I'm at the VVD, uh, what was supposed to be our election party, but instead they saw 13 years of VVD rule crumble. Uh Why do you use a Norwegian accent for a Dutch election? Brother, because the Dutch don't have an accent. It's like they literally speak like fucking valley girls. Uh, as the PVB doubled its take of seats from 17 in 2021 now to 35. Now this has been billed over the past few days as a very close race between three or maybe even four parties. But these results show that there was no close contest in any way. The party where I am, the PVD. That's a wild thing to say they absolutely have an accent. Dude, let me tell you something. Okay. No, they don't even talk like calm Germans. No, they have fucking... Listen, the problem is... No, I'm telling you, they do not. They do not have an accent. It's like, it's like very marginal. It's very... It's like hard to pick up on. And the reason why is because they literally have... They literally have dubbed... Like, they, they don't watch dubbed films. They watch it subbed. I've investigated the matter, Okay. I have investigated this matter personally. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, exactly. Journalists on screen is Dutch. No accent. Tumbled from 34 down to 23 seats. And the second biggest party is actually the Green Labour Party, led by Franz Timmermans. He came in with 26 seats. But what this all gives us is a bit of a mess because forming a coalition, which is what these parties will invariably have to do, could be quite tricky with this result. The two parties that came out on top loathe each other, uh, would never work together. Uh, and so for now it is celebration. What do you mean dog? I lived in Amsterdam, stop gaslighting me. Okay, I'm telling you, I'm telling you a lot of the Dutch accents, unironically when they speak English, when they speak their own fucking made up language, it's unacceptable, okay? The, the sounds that are coming out of their mouths is fucking ridiculous, okay? It's like fake German and and whatever the fuck it is. I don't know what it is, okay? However, as far as like, as far as speaking uh, to, to Dutch people in English, their accent in comparison to the rest of Europe is like basically non-existent. And the reason for that, the reason for that is because, and I've asked people why this is the case, the reason for that is because they, unlike many other, unlike many other European countries, including like in Turkey, for example, which is not a European country, all of these countries usually dub their movies and dub their cinema and dub their TV shows to whatever the native language is. The Dutch do not do that. They actually watch it in English with subtitles. And for that reason, a lot of younger, a lot of like uh, Dutch people my age literally have English, uh, uh, like... They, they sound American, like they've perfected the accent in comparison to the average German person or the average French person. In time for Wilders, he just came on screen giving a speech. Uh, press has not been allowed at his celebration party. Even the national broadcaster had to park a camera in front of the window of the cafe where he is celebrating. Um I slammed my penis in the car door. Ich slammet mit penis in the car door. <laughs> you did a perfect Dutch accent, it sounded just like this. Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at nine ways to sound Dutch. An analysis of uh, Dutch accents and Dutch phonology. And number one is intonation. The Dutch language's preferred rhythm is called trochaic. It goes dum to dum to dum to dum to dum. We stress on every... It's ridiculous, dude. What, why are we doing? What are we doing with this fake ass language? But after the party will come the headache of putting together a government with this result. What, what do you make of his initial comments uh, since, since these results have trickled in? He, he said that Dutch voters have had their say and they clearly have had enough. He also is talking about returning the country to, to the Dutch. 
this is of course rhetoric which seems to have really uh, hit a nerve. He wasn't anywhere near the polls as little as a week ago. He wasn't even projected to be in the top three. Uh, but then those TV debates came along and he had his moment. This is of course a man with a lot of experience. He's been in politics for 25 years. He has this election toned down his rhetoric in order to be able to be allowed into government. Uh, for the longest time, a vote for the PVV meant you had no chance of him forming a coalition with anyone. But this election, with Mark Rutte gone, that door has been creaked open. Parties say that. Have you seen this? Yes, I have covered Gert Wilders before. He's a fucking animal. He's a fucking classic, typical European piece of shit, racist fucking asshole. Today, I have a message for the Turks. Your government is fooling you into believing that one day you will become a member of the European Union. Well, forget it. You are no Europeans and you will never be. An Islamic state like Turkey does not belong to Europe. All the values Europe stands for. At least he's honest. I mean, this rest of, the rest of it is like racist, but like he is right. As far as like saying uh, an Islamic state like Turkey with like 80 million fucking Muslims is never going to be allowed into Europe is correct because Europeans are just as racist as this guy. Some of them just simply mask it. Okay. Here's the thing, boys. Europeans are some of the most polite races you've ever met in your fucking lives. Okay. They will be so incredibly polite. And their racism won't be like American style racism where it's like, man, you jihadi, haji, motherfucker. Uh, you know, how about you go uh, keep fucking donkeys or whatever? Like, European racism is like, I have done, I've done the mathematical equation to find out does your, your skull phrenology from a, a mile away that you have a 35% higher likelihood of having an IQ that is substandard. It's like, it's very, that is, of course, when they get like, you know, openly racist. It's very, very weird. Okay? <laughs> very true. They talk about Albanians like they're from Mars. <laughs> yeah. Like, American racism has no sophistication. It's just pure grit. Okay? It's like, what you see is what you get. That's why I always joke about how, like, Americans don't even know how to be, like, racist towards Indians, right? Like, they just don't even know. They're just like, that's brown. I think that's a terrorist, right? Like, they don't even fully know. They're like, oh... Uh, 7-Eleven. Like, that's all they got for, like, Indian people and Pakistani people who are also Indian. I mean, think about it this way. They call fucking Native Americans Indians, dog. Like, that's how, that's how stupid and unrefined American racism is. That is, of course, before you get to, like, old school uh, anti-black racism, in which case, when you open up the racist tomes, they have, like, literal diagnostics of, like, what percentage black you are. But beyond that, most Americans are like, what you see is what you get. Europeans, on the other hand, are insanely fucking racist and in very cutting ways, okay? Freedom, democracy, human rights are incompatible with Islam. We do not want visa-free travel for Turks coming to Europe either. European governments that agree with this will be voted out of office by the people. One of Switzerland's biggest political parties that oppose it literally said Kosovo Albanians are stabbing Swiss people. <laughs> oh, that's fucking awesome. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's always funny. It's always funny looking at European countries and their politics because it's like a lot of Euros come in here and they're like, <laughs> uh, lol, America, so racist. Lol, you guys don't have health care. And then like, you know, you got like a, like a pedophile, you got like the pedophile Nazi party guy uh, that, that, you know, runs on the, we should kill Muslims ticket. <laughs> we should kill every Romani ticket is really popping off right now, you know? And it's like, yeah, it's really bad. It's, it's really fucking bad. Turkey voted for Erdogan, a dangerous Islamist who raises the flag of Islam. We do not want more, but less Islam. <laughs> so Turkey, stay away from us. You are not welcome. I love this video because it's like exactly the type of shit that triggers the fuck out of every Turk. You got obviously the, the Islamophobic shit that like pisses off a lot of Islamist Turks. And then you have the other side of it where uh, all of the secular Turks get so mad because he's saying, like, Turkey is an Islamist country, right? 
it, you you ended up pissing off every Turkish person with this take. You know what I mean? He was able to piss off all the Erdogan supporters and the anti-Erdogan uh, Turks as well. He he hit every angle because he's racist. It's that easy. He's an anti-Turk, racist piece of shit. But he's not just anti-Turk. He's just anti-everything, really. As a Moroccan, I find it funny that he's punching the Turks when most Muslims in the Netherlands are Moroccan. Ha ha. Did you see the more or less Moroccans clip from Gert? No. This is really funny. Kate Agents at uh, Newark wearing scars, which look a lot like the Palestinian kafia. Is there a message United is trying to promote? I love this because, like, this isn't even the fucking kafia. It's just, like, they're, they're just wearing, like, winter scarves with the fucking planes on it. Thank you, sir. I know a lot of people are making fun of you, but it's because you got upset about people working for an airline or wearing scarves that have little airplanes on them. I'm going to get on the horn with the president and make sure all airports are on lockdown. No, I love, I love hallucinating. I love being so fucking, this just proved your previous point. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> See, Americans don't know how to be racist. <laughs> like a European racist would look at this, okay, and go, it's highly suspicious that this plane, pa <laughs> this plane pattern is, is, uh, I mean, I don't think a, I don't think a European would even look at the fucking kefir. The European would literally look at this and go, "I have analyzed the skull shape uh, to figure out that this person is like, you know, from I, I don't know the the eastern part of Africa, and this person is uh, like I don't know. They would just like they would literally p figure out their haplogroups to be like very specifically racist towards them. You know what I mean? Think about it this way. Think about it this way. Europeans have to be super fucking racist because they're racist towards other white people. Like, imagine, imagine being racist towards other white people. Like, you live in America, so in your mind, you're like, yeah, you're white, it's just white or black, right? That's the dynamic. You got white and you got non-white. In Europe, they're like, oh, you're Turkish, you're Polish, you're Italian. Like, you were talking about Switzerland, which is really funny because, like, there is, and I didn't know this uh, at the time, but there's, like, uh, Italianopho Italiophobia in Switzerland for the Italian ethnic uh, Swiss. Like, Swiss people that are, like, ethnically Italian uh, get, like, yelled at and are not considered real Swiss. Which is really funny. I mean, yeah, there's fucking Italiophobia in Italy between Northern Italians and Southern Italians. These are concepts that uh, the American mind cannot comprehend. Okay? We've talked about this before. Serbs are literally so busy trying to shit on those who are literally like 0.003% different than them that they have no time to be anti-black. Okay? When you've maxed out on anti-Balkan, uh, on your hatred towards your neighbors to a certain degree, you literally do not have enough fucking, you don't have the capacity to be anti-black. It's so funny. Yeah, they, they maxed out on their racism towards the Balkans. Anyway, so yeah, think about that. Yes, America famously doesn't have a north-south divide. I think America's north-south divide is like not even anything what are you talking about america's north south divide is not even remotely comparable what do you mean there is no north south divide there's a black and white divide as i mentioned already to be fair balkan races there's a clear cultural divide no the fuck there isn't no the cultural divide does not exist between the north and south the cultural divide exists between cities and rural areas that's literally not true Anywhere you go around the fucking country, you go to a goddamn city, you're going to get, you know, more or less the same fucking vibes. You have to be, you have to be hopped up on so much like bicoastal elitist liberalism juice to look at the situation in America and be like, well, there's a clear cut north and south divide here. He's a time traveler from the 1800s brothers lost. Yeah. <laughs> Bro thinks people are racist against the Dixies, Lamal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. It's literally like people in Minnesota were being racist to people from Wisconsin, which is a laughable concept. Yeah. Um, 
Anyway, let's talk about Gert Wilders further. City rule divide doesn't apply to all countries, man. Korea, for example, you are mixing nationalism with racism. Your take on some people in Europe is the same as the racist albino dude. Why negating their individuality? Who's the racist albino dude? So Serbs are not humans, just races? Oh my God. Leave it to, leave it to a, a, a Serb to get so fucking annoyingly pedantic immediately. Oh my God, dude. Dude, shut the fuck up. Oh my God, my bad. My bad, bro. I bulk and posted, okay? Chatter, take it to two Balkan for you. My bad for the Balkan posing. It was a joke. It's a joke that I make with, you know, a wonderful Serb friend that I have that uh, you've seen on this broadcast as well. Serb, uh, well, Serb, uh, uh, Australian. Not you, Gopnik, but he's great too. Serb motherfuckers be like, it's a war crime to make a joke. Anyway, just want to say shout out to Kometo and many other North African fresh streamers who are the only not insanely racist news source. Yeah, I actually talked to him. Remember the thing that I uh, made a joke about and then, like, they misunderstood what I was saying about how, like, I'm doing the great replacement by fucking your moms and they thought I was, like, unironically, be like, pro-great replacement narratives, like, as though it was real. And I felt so bad and I, like, reached out to him and I was like, brother, I'm, I'm Muslim. Like, the fuck? I'm, you know, this is what I talk against. Like, I'm, I was joking. Anyway, Turkey is pretty much Europe. Azan self-report. Yeah, not really. Nazi tempels zouden zijn. Dan zouden wij dat ook. Dan zou de wereld te klein zijn als dat zou toegestaan. Nou, dit is gelooft u me. He's like, but it would be sick if there were Nazi temples. <laughs> de islamitische ideologie is zo makkelijk <laughs> nog gevaarlijk. Geert Wilders is a Dutch politician with long shot aspirations to be the next. Bro. He said mosques are more dangerous than Nazi temples. That is a self report. Prime Minister of the Netherlands. The 53-year-old is known for his bottle blonde hair and far-right political views. He's considered one of the most stridently anti-Muslim politicians in Europe. The Dutch race on March 15th comes ahead of others in France, Germany, and elsewhere, and will likely be a big test of Europe's threshold for tolerance. Populists like Wilders have been fueled by nationalist appeals and hardline stances on immigration. No way, you will not. What's his take on Israel? Uh, I don't know what his take is on Israel, but I can already tell you he's a hyper Zionist. Okay. European fascists nowadays, European fascists nowadays have fully swapped over from like being anti-Semitic to being like ultra Zionist hardliners who just say like our enemy is Muslim. Our enemy is Muslim. Always. Honestly, as a Muslim, how do you stay positive? Personally, my mental has been shit the last month, especially because I'm Palestinian too. I don't know. I've seen the waves come and go of Islamophobia. So um, things will inevitably get better again, I guess. It's been a long time. I, I don't know. I've been, I've been getting yelled at and being called a terrorist for so long that like it literally just goes right over my head. Like I don't even fucking hear it. I actually voted in the Netherlands. I went with SP, the Socialist Party. Mostly due to their Palestinian stance and recognition of the apartheid. Also the brainwashing you have inflicted on me in the past four years. Thanks. I have a SP hoodie that my dad wears all the time. I don't think he knows what it is. One of you guys sent it to me like a long ass time ago. Oh, you sent that to me, Clowny Smiles? Yeah, fucking sick. But the rage I feel when I see racists enjoying donut is immeasurable. I mean, dude, can you blame them though? Uh, have you seen the open AI drama? Warger, I literally had fucking New York Times tech reporter Mike Isaac on like an hour ago. Anyway, um, yeah, I like the, the fascists in Europe are usually... Both anti-Semitic and ultra-Zionist at the same time. So it's like uh, Viktor Orban, for example. Viktor Orban is like an anti-Semite, but he fucking loves Israel, right? Um, they, they love Israel, one, because like, it's great. They don't want to be around Jews anyway. So like, go to Israel, ew, right? But also, they, they love Israel because it's like killing Muslims and they hate Muslims, right? <coughs> So that's, that's usually why they're like ultra, they're ultra, ultra Zionists. Make the Netherlands home. The Netherlands is known to be one of the most socially liberal countries in Europe, and the local Muslim population is well assimilated. Still, Wilder's message that the influx of migrants, especially from Muslim countries, is a threat to Dutch and Western culture has resonated. He has the backing of a large part of the electorate. 
He has called Islam a totalitarian ideology, not a religion, and compared the... It's my favorite type of, like, supposedly liberal fascist. Like, guy who hates Islam because Islam is not woke. <laughs> uh, liberals do this shit all the time in America. It's just like, I want to fucking die. The Quran to Mein Kampf. Before that Islam <laughs> is dressed up as a religion, but actually is a totalitarian ideology. He bickered against mosques, headscarves, and migrants. Hoofddoekjes, burkas, minaretten, uitkeringsafhankelijkheid, misdaad. Het houdt maar niet op. And openly called Moroccans scum. There is a lot of Moroccan scum in Holland who makes the streets unsafe. Jesus Christ, dude. Guys, certainly, um, certainly there's nothing to worry about. That all of these uh, fascist motherfuckers are winning elections and stuff. It's fine. He's been extremely pro-Israel, has been since the start of his career. Yeah. Wait, isn't he gay, Gert? Is he gay or is he homophobic? I think he is gay, right? He has an immigrant wife. Oh, one of these guys I thought was like, uh, he's gay and homophobic. No, that's Pim Fortuyen. Inside every Nazi, there are two wolves. One that hates Jews more than Muslims and the other hates Muslims more than Jews. Eventually, both are gay and homophobic. Yeah. Both of those wolves see the top of the hour ad break. What's the name of the Dutch who was anti-Islam and Islamophobic that became Muslim by actually studying Islam? I don't know. My understanding is that Israel was allowed in Eurovision because they were considered Europeans more than Middle Eastern, despite Eurasian nations being excluded. Crazy how racist Europe is. Who could have guessed after hundreds of years of running colonies? Yeah, shocking that the guys who invented racism, like racism as we understand it, was quite literally invented in Europe. Okay, as a way to justify uh, colonial action. Shocked to find out that they are still keeping that shit alive. I think the thing that I hate here, I ran the ad break, by the way. The thing that I hate about like European racism is that it's so it's so sh like hidden under pompous elitist rhetoric, too. Like at least the American racist is like a dumb guy that you can make fun of. The British racists are usually like that, too, like the EDO. Islamic ray guns guys, right? Like you're like, oh yeah, you're fucking stupid racist idiot. You're inbred. Like European, European racists are so elitist. Like they, they treat racism like a, like a mathematical equation and they just look at you like, oh, your simple mind cannot understand the complexities that I am describing to you. You know what I mean? Like very, it's very annoying. Certainly, there's still, like, uh, dumbasses in all these countries, too, who are just, like, the dumb races that you know and love. But, you know, it's, it's, very, it's very annoying, very smarmy, very elitist, and it's, it's condescending. And I don't like that. I hate the condescension on top of the, the, the racism. Yeah, it's the Sam Harris uh, type of racism, exactly. At least, like, at least our fucking races are dumb as fuck. And you could just like point at them and laugh. Uh, you're idealizing your racism. Most of our races are hogs just like yours. No, I think about like people at the tippy top, right? Like American racist politicians are so openly stupid with their racism. Whereas European racist politicians, you look at them and you're like, I don't get it. Like, are you, like, what are you saying to me right now? Are you, you, you sound like you're talking about uh, uplifting European social democracy. And then you just made a weird pivot to like how, uh, the Muslim is actually, uh, stealing all of the welfare, but, uh, but, but not even in that way. Like the Muslim does not integrate to the European society, uh, adequately. There's a difference between you, your racist nan and granddad and a professional racist like Douglas Murray. Yeah. In 2010, he spoke at Ground Zero to protest against the construction of a mosque there. A tolerant society like your city, New York. Yeah. Sociocultural elitism that weaponizes racism. I mean, think about Emmanuel Macron. Emmanuel Macron is like a great example of like the type of racist piece of shit that like masks himself under like liberal politics, like social liberalism while simultaneously being like deeply and undesirably racist. And he's not like as bad as fucking Marine Le Pen, but still. Must defend itself against the powers of darkness. He has had to stand trial for inciting hatred and discriminating against Muslims. Twice. The first time, in 2010, he was acquitted. But four years later, he led a chant at one of his rallies in The Hague demanding fewer Moroccans. In deze stad 
en in Nederland. Meer of minder Marokkanen. And he was eventually found guilty of inciting discrimination, but not of hate speech. There has been plenty of pushback against Wilders, including at the United Nations. And I am angry, too, because of Mr. Wilders' lies and, and half-truths, manipulations, and peddling of fear. And opposition party leaders insist Wilders doesn't represent the whole country. When I look to the international media, they are paying a lot of attention to... Shadow is wrong about why Israel's in Eurovision. They're in it because one of their broadcasts is in the EBU. That's all you need to take part. Despite being called European, the EBU is global and even includes China. Geert Wilders. And that's not the Netherlands. It's just a part of the Netherlands. Wilders' one-page electoral program calls for closing borders for Muslims, shutting down mosques, and even banning the Quran. Most Dutch parties have already refused to form a coalition with the Party for Freedom, making it unlikely Wilders will enter the government. I will be Prime Minister today. But he has succeeded at one thing, setting the agenda for the electoral season. Yeah, and winning, dude. Fucking popping off. You can see how racist some of the Netherlands are by watching how racist Max Verstappen fans treat Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, this was six years ago. Oh, I don't know how people, I don't know how people refuse to recognize what is happening in Europe, what is happening in America. Income and wealth inequality is akin to the, uh, to the 20s, 1920s. The, the instability of the global economy is uh, creating incredible breeding ground for hatred. Right-wing fascist parties are gaining prominence all around Europe. Vox in Spain doing massive demonstrations. Italy already has a pro-fascist uh, leader. Marine Le Pen is going to seize power in the next in the upcoming election. Um, as our uh, German chatters have been informing me nonstop, in 2025, AFD will seize power in Germany, or at least like capture some uh, some more power in Germany. And a lot of the reactionary politics, the anti-Islam politics that you see in these countries unironically predate like America's war on terror or the refugees that came after America's war on terror and its destabilization. Brexit saved the UK from the right wing? Yeah, totally. That's why your Labour Party is, is more far right than it has been in years. You have a Tory government that's like awful in general with no alternative. Every single one of these countries, every single one of these countries, whether it be social Democrats in Sweden or uh, Macron in France, have unironically continued, especially in contemporary society in the past like 30 years, as neoliberalism took hold in the Western world and completely captured almost the entirety of the Western world, Every single, especially after the, the uh, dissolution of the USSR, every single social democracy has slowly but surely moved to the right economically. Okay? Austerity measures. Implementation of austerity measures, destruction of social safety nets, and the economic volatility that, is, that it has created is a perfect breeding ground for fascist politics. I've watched this happen in America for years and years and years. The neoliberal Democratic Party and the neoliberal Republican Party picked apart what remained of the already awful social safety nets in the United States of America while pointing the finger of blame, at least championed by the Republican Party, towards Muslims, towards immigrants, towards uh, black people, towards poor people. I'm afraid that we're going to try to check China and they're going to slap us around. I mean, I don't know. It's just my only problem, my only fear with China is that they are not like ideologically interested in in promoting socialism. They're just more so interested and invested in uh, Chinese prosperity than anything else. They have mentioned time and time again that they are not interested in regime change, like recognizing the mistakes of the USSR, but not the not the good lessons that you could have learned from the USSR, but like it is the bad ones. So even the so even the socialist alternative, even the socialist supposedly socialist alternative is not interested in a multipolar world that is like willing to ideologically prop up 
socialist parties in other countries in the way that the USSR did. Anti-colonial action and uh, democratic socialism was, was ultimately fostered. And even if it wasn't directly, uh, directly uh, funded or, or uh, supported by the USSR, the existence of the USSR as a, at least at the time, socialist nation created an opportunity for a lot of these European social democracies to uh, continue pushing for amenities that they take for granted to this day welfare and and health care and things of that nature i think that the existence of the ussr created an opportunity for these countries to be like well we have to capitulate to the social democrats we have to capitulate to the social democrats lest we lose uh, these countries directly to the specter haunting europe specter of communism so i don't think that there is um a i don't think that there's a good alternative Wait, wait, could you explain that one better? It sounds like you're saying liberalism inevitably leads to fascism. Wow. Is that what I'm saying? That's crazy. Check this one. If you're mad about European Jews immigrating to the Palestine in the 1930s, why do you think Middle Easterners have a right to European countries? This is my favorite type of, like, racist piece of shit. Brother, I've never, I've never considered immigration, okay, consensual immigration, to be a bad thing. I myself live in America. I was raised in Turkey. My family's Turkish. Why the fuck would I be anti-immigration? Do you think that like Muslim refugees or Middle Easterners that are going into European countries are doing it as an act of settler colonialism by a much larger power that controls the Netherlands? Like is Netherlands basically a colonial offset that is now being uh, purposely filled to the brim with Muslims by uh, whatever the, the imperial superpower is that's like forcibly uh, resettling people there? Is that what you think? It's so fucking stupid that people unironically make these comparisons not realizing how dumb it is. Like, like people go, uh-huh, uh, you want to protect our southern borders. Or, uh, sorry, you, oh, you, you hate that like uh, Jewish people as a part of the British Empire's policy forcibly were, were uh, replacing the, the native population um guess what sweetie that's what mexicans are doing in america it's like yeah dude the colony the the great mexican empire that controls the territory of the united states of america is forcibly resettling mexicans uh sending mexicans into america after you know engaging in an act of settler colonialism that's right settler occupation is not immigration exactly but i mean i think people think that because I mean, it's great replacement shit, right? They do legitimately think immigration is the same as, like, forcibly relocating the white, pure population. Ah, oh, fuck. I don't want to watch the rest of this.